Ready, set, let's go. No, go away. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Can we to keep watch. this going, yeah? Can we keep this going? Hello, Nico, and welcome here in the Happy House, London. That is a, an absolute belter. My name is Raphael Balestra, and I work uh, as a heritage manager and archives in the heritage department at Audemars Piguet. My name is Nico Leonard. I'm the CEO of Pride and Pinion, but first and foremost, I'm the watch guy from YouTube. I don't know what to say. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm, like... I'm happy that we are here and that we can actually enjoy a few watches. Amazing. Raphael, I, I know you're the boss man of the <laughs> Museum of the Archives. I'm incredibly grateful I have this opportunity to, to spend some time with you and talk about one of my favorite brands of all time, you know? But before we talk about this, I just wanted to learn a bit more about you. I mean, I started getting into watches at an age of about 13. Mm. I loved taking things apart. I loved mechanical mm -hmm. things. I loved the idea of the fact that we track time while using a mechanical device. Mm. That still today is a fascination for me. So, Nico, as we are here, I also brought some nice watches from our heritage collection that we could speak about and to illustrate a bit the history of the Royal Oak collection that is more than 50 years old now. So let's see what we have first. Oh, I like that box. I like it. <laughs> the first thing I want to ask you is, can you tell me what reference it is? Let's see. That's insane. This is where it all started. 5402 A serial. That's such a low number. That's <laughs> ridiculous, lad. That is, in, that is special, mate. This is the watch that, that, that changed the industry and, and changed AP. One of the reasons why the industry is the way it is today. What was really different was it's a steel watch. Yeah. But steel and a luxury watch. Yeah. So steel is polished. Mm -hmm. It is satin brushed. So the traditional finishing normally applied only to gold yeah. or to platinum were applied to steel, which is quite a bit harder to do. But at the end, what we want to do with the watch, we want to play with the light. Aye. And that's always what we want to do. It was something that wasn't supposed to happen at that moment in time, mm -hmm. really. No one has ever seen anything like that or expected anything mm -hmm. like that. And actually, it's not the first in steel, for yeah. example, yeah. Uh, there are many others. And even in the same year, you can find other steel watches and so on. But still, in that type of finishing, in that type of quality, with an extra thin movement, and with that bracelet... From a brand that was known for making small, complicated watches. I can imagine how shocking it could have been for some people at the time, Aye. when they saw that at the Basel Fair. And I remember speaking with, for example, Jacqueline Dimier, that was a designer Aye. at AP. And she was working for another brand at that time. And she said, but everyone went to see that watch at this fair because it was something exceptional. So we were not expected to make, to make this. No. Jacqueline, she designed the Royal Oak too, didn't she? Yes, As... which brings me to the next subject. There she is, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's beautiful, that dial is beautiful. And actually this watch was the first to come after the Royal Oak. What you have to keep in mind is that 72, 5402 reference came out. Yeah. During four years, it is one reference, one size, one material, one dial. That's it. One option. Yeah. The next option is this one. I think something like this today will become very, very popular. It was really nice to have this idea of making a women's watch just the same, but in yeah. different proportion. Some might say, ah, oh, it's just smaller. Aye. It's not as simple as that. Designing a watch is not just making something smaller. You also see that the proportions from the bezel to the case are different. Yes, because the screws Aye. are part of the waterproofness. Exactly. And uh, there is a limit that you have to respect. So that's why it is always a question of balance. You must have seen the most amazing watches <laughs> ever. Can I have your job? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see a watch like this, that was clearly a feminine yeah. version of yeah. the Royal Oak. And that was 
advertised as is. Yeah. But for me, it is also an illustration of a watch that is not attributed to a gender. I wanted to have your opinion on that. I personally see a trend differently. I saw a trend where women were wearing bigger watches, mm -hmm. man's watches, but now I see the opposite. I see man wearing smaller watches. I don't think there should be a mad difference between a female lady's watch or a man's watch. Mm -hmm. I would just classify it royal oak. Okay. You come in. You're the character here, no? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> now, here I have one of the watch that for me is the next step in yeah. the Royal Oak collection because it's the introduction of complications, actually. All right. And we have... Wow. You know the, the nickname of this watch? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it look like? An owl. Uh, it's really, really cool. Perfect size as well, a 37, you know? It's the first complication, introduction of day date, yeah. then day date moon phase, and of course, yeah. perpetual calendar. That bracelet is the best, most beautiful bracelet in the world. <laughs> if you look at the 5402, you see, it's flat, mm -hmm. and here it isn't. I was always wondering what reference number that changed, and I've never been able to find yeah, it. It's a different uh, reference number for the bracelet. Yeah. Because of the size of the case, so the bracelet was also built differently, uh -huh. and perhaps from another manufacturer. Uh -huh. You have to go to AP Chronicles to find that out, because I don't have that uh, by heart in my head. Can we make a video about me coming to the museum? <laughs> are, you think, are, are we all gonna figure this out together, yeah? <laughs> Can we do that? That could be a cool thing to do. That would be amazing. <laughs> you know what I really love about Royal Oaks and dials and layouts and this watch in particular? It's a symmetry. This is why it's called the Owl. It's so incredibly symmetric. I love that. Incredible watch. You told me just before that you didn't like. Let me see. No, go away. That is ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, no. You no. told me you didn't like the no, black no. ceramic. No, I said I really like the white one. I think it's the 26579. The white one, there are, there's also a blue version of that, the black version as well. But of course I like this. Like, I wouldn't <laughs> say no to that. But I really like that white one because it's <laughs> just something that we shouldn't be doing, but we're doing it anyway, right? Just incredible. So when you think about different colors of ceramic, and the association with perpetual calendar, that is the utmost classical complication. Yeah. A perpetual calendar in a ceramic case is basically, you shouldn't be allowed to do that, but you're doing that anyway. And then with a collar, in blue, for example, unbelievable. And the dial is spectacular. And you know, the contrast with the moon face, incredible. But white, mate, because you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> That's why I love that so much. Like playing with ceramic, I mean, using different materials is also a form of innovation. Mm. I am very traditional, but I do really enjoy a wee bit more forward thinking and, and that blue one really caught me off guard. There is one thing important with this one is that it was really one of the watch that brought again a lot of attractiveness and popularity in the Royal Oak collection. So this is a mechanical watch, a mechanical object, and it will tell you the date, it will tell you the time, it will tell you the month, it will tell you the day, it will tell you the, the position of the moon, it will tell you everything for how many years? Till the year 2100. <laughs> Do you sell watches? No. Because I could buy one from you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I love this so much, right? I really, really love the perpetual calendar and the way it's executed in the Royal Oak. I think it because the shape of the Royal Oak is so good. Mm -hmm. It's so nice, you can, you have, you still feel that symmetry, you see? Mm -hmm. I rarely see these ceramic models. It's really, really cool. I wish this one was white though. <laughs> <laughs> Again, please bring us Can we keep watch. this going, yeah? Can we keep this going? This, yes. this just bringing me watches, <laughs> aye? What do we have here? Yeah. Special. Frosted white gold. That is really cool. That is really, really cool. Double balance wheel, open worked. And actually the frosted gold is a technique to of a different finishing on the watch that brings this shininess. I don't know if you would think that frosted gold is better than a non-factory set diamonds. Oh yeah, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> You don't touch. The only <laughs> people that are allowed to touch this watch is AP. You see what I mean? <laughs> we made that in collaboration with Caroline Nabucci, 
that Aye. made this technique on her jewels and we tried to find a way to put that on our watches because it's quite a different uh, way of doing the things. And also, as you know, when you have a watch, the parts, you cannot reduce them as you want or if you make a decoration, it has to be still something with the right properties. So it took uh, some time for us to find a way, but for me, the, the result is really outstanding. Although a skeleton is not very legible, this is just brilliant showing off. I love this. I mean, skeletonization is already a very, very complicated process. But then to just to show off putting two balance wheels in there just for the sheer banter is just it's amazing. Like, I had a 15407 skeleton double skid, exactly like this in steel. But this is such a different watch. That finish is spectacular. It is just insane. For me, the frosted gold adds to the open work because you have the skeleton in the center that is a mix of colors, of the angles, of how the light plays with it. And with this type of finishing also, it really is an, an, a different play of light. What do you think? It suits well. All right. It suits well. Right, deal and done. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to show me what watch do you have on your wrists and explain a bit more about it. Yeah, in comparison to all the other beauties, uh, it's not that special, but for me it is. Ah. Very, very special. And I think that that is one of the things what watches is about. It is something so personal. This is my 26331, my, my Royal Oak Chronograph. A, a watch that I, I love very, very much. Um, 2019, a watch I've attached a lot of important memories. I wore this watch when my son was born. I wore this watch when my daughter was born. It's a watch that will be forever in my family. It's not about the value, it's about the story. Yeah, but that's also a, a lot what we hear sometimes about, ah, but this watch is worth that. No. no, this watch is your history. Because for me, it will never mean the same. No. So you will probably never sell me this watch. Never. No, never. No, 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 no. There's many things no, I will no, sell. Not but even not... if I wanted to trade one of those. No, 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 no. That's irreplaceable. We are coming now to what is behind the watch collecting or the, the passion for watches. It's because, after all, it's an object. But it's yeah. not just an object, because it's an object that lives with us. So it is those emotions that we attach to this object that are important and that give the importance to the object. Exactly. But now, can you name me any object in the world, any object in the world that you can bring with you every single day for 50 years? and that carried a story of 50 years prior to that. But there's not an object in the world that can do that. Creating those stories, attaching them, makes it so personable. And this is why watch collecting is very, very personal. I really want to make sure that, that in 20 years we look at watches the same, the same as we look at watches now. Memories. And because effectively we don't need this object, but we want it. And that's the beauty of it. To finish, I brought you a little surprise. Is that for me? <laughs> yeah. Can I keep that? Uh, unfortunately, oh. you won't be able to keep it. But it's another watch that has some features that we already saw in some of the watches here, but that tells also different aspects of the story of Old Mapige and the Rail Oak. I'm really curious here. <laughs> there she is. No way. That is insane. <laughs> That's insane. You were just that mentioning is... the watch before, while we were discussing. That's and I thought, insane. And I thought, how come we picked the right watch? That's <laughs> insane, Travis Scott. The watches are really important in the hip hop culture, but it's also the other way around. What we see here is a piece of history where we will talk about in 20 years. This is massively important because it's our task to bring watches to a wider audience, mainstream and do this the right way. And this is done the right way. This is culturally very important. I told you the craziness of this story. Whenever my wife was in, in labor to our baby girl on the 1st of December. So she was born on the 1st of December, but she was born one minute past 12 on the 1st of December, right? The day before they just launched that watch. For some reason, I grabbed my phone to take a photo. My Instagram popped up and I was like, oh, saw that watch and I was distracted. That's insane. So this watch will forever have a 
story. That story will forever be connected to this watch with me. All I want to make sure that I one day can buy this to make sure that I continue that legacy. Yeah, it is a perpetual calendar in a brown ceramic case. But the perpetual calendar was also completely redesigned in collaboration with the artist. We took a really nice classical watch and we really made it in collaboration with it. And that for me is also the purpose of doing a collab with someone, is going further than just, just for the sake of having a name on the watch. I'm a big fan of Travis Scott as well, that makes it, makes it quite easy. But to be honest, as a watch, I saw this and I'm like, I need this. I need this. <laughs> you can have that one back. Yeah. <laughs> I want this. For me, this is a watch brand that looks, looks at the future looks at how can we maintain or make sure that the next generation is interested in watches. I really appreciate you showing me this, you know? <laughs> who else is doing, doing stuff like that? Who, like tell me who. Uh, don't name me useless names, right? Because <laughs> I don't want to hear. So Nico, thank you very much for having been here with me to speak about a bit of history of the Royal Oak collection through some of the models. Glad to be uh, speaking with you, with someone that has passion and once and for all, almost, that wants to share his knowledge and his passion with people. Because at the end, that's what it's all about. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you. It is an absolute pleasure. And I really, really appreciate, first of all, allowing me to see all these beautiful, insane Royal Oaks and allowing me to see this for the first time ever. This is really, really special. I really appreciate that. I won't forget that. But thank you for that, by the way. I'm bringing that home. <laughs> no, no, you're not getting this off me now. That's done, mate.